Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today I'm going to do something different. I'm participating in an Alzheimer's challenge and I'm going to make a hemostat mandala gravity dye for that challenge. Here's a little bit of information about the challenge. I'm doing the challenge with a lady named Michelle. You can find her on YouTube at Michelle Sews Again and she's also on Instagram at The Real Michelle Sews Again. I'll put a link down below this video in the description to a video that Michelle has made kind of explaining the challenge and the purpose for this challenge. So as you know, I've kind of been on a kick of doing a bunch of gravity dyes. The weather's really warm and I think they're a lot of fun to do, quite frankly. So for this challenge, I thought I would go ahead and do hemostat mandala and pair it with a gravity ice dye. To do that, I'm only going to add the mandala on the front portion of the shirt. So I'm finding the center of the front of the shirt by folding the bottom part of the shirt in half and making a mark on the center and doing the same thing on the top. Then I'm going to grab those two marks, lift the shirt up off of the table, kind of give it a shake just so that I get the front of the shirt. Then I'm going to lay it down flat and that will isolate the front side of the shirt. Using a washable marker, I'm going to make a mark where I'd like the center of the mandala to be. And I like the center of the mandala to normally be a little bit above where the actual center of the shirt is. I just think it looks a little better. I usually put it somewhere close to the armpit of the shirt. This one is a little bit lower than the armpit. Then I'm going to grab the bottom part of the shirt and fold it up to that mark that I just made. And grab the top part of the shirt and fold it down. To do a mandala, you kind of start the fold like you are making a paper airplane. Then to make the next fold a little easier, I'm going to place a ruler underneath this midline. Pinch that middle seam and fold the shirt in half. I'm going to make one more fold on each side and when I do that's going to fold the shirt into an eight point mandala. Before I continue though, I need to cut off a snag that I see on the shirt. I'm going to use some hemostats on this shirt and initially I thought I was going to use my curved hemostats but I decided on using the straight ones. The majority of the ones that I'm going to use are 10 and 12 inch hemostats and I have coated mine in heat shrink tubing. I purchase it at either Lowe's or Home Depot in the electrical department. I place it over the teeth of the hemostats and then use a heat gun to shrink it around the hemostat teeth. That helps to keep the hemostats from damaging the fabric. One of the fun things about using hemostats to make mandalas is you can just experiment with the design. For this shirt, I'm going to use pairs of hemostats and place them on the shirt in a diagonal manner.
So my husband recently bought some different shelves for the garage and we had a metal shelving unit that was left over after he kind of reorganized a few things. So of course I snatched it up and decided to try it for the gravity dying. So that's what I've done is I've placed this shirt on top of the metal rack and I put the mandala portion on the top and then I've left the extra portion hanging over the edge of the rack. On the second shelf of the rack, I placed one of the plastic dish pans that I get from the dollar store to catch any of the runoff or the muck. Then I'm going to use my silicone cake molds and some wooden clothespins to make myself an ice barrier around the mandala portion of the shirt. For this shirt, I thought it would be fun just to try and see if I could kind of combine the definite design of a mandala along with a little bit of the more randomness of the gravity die. Let's see how well this works out. By the way, I have links down below to where I purchased the silicone cake molds and quite a few of the other items that I'm using when I tie dye. The color for Alzheimer's awareness is purple. So the challenge was that we were supposed to do something in purple. So I've chosen colors that are blue purples and red purples. You know I love to tie dye with purple a lot anyway, so this is definitely a challenge that I'm comfortable with. In between the hemostats, I'm using royal purple from Dye Spin. At the very end or the center of the mandala, I'm using Vintage Purple from Dye Spin. I'm going to use Lilac from Dharma in two of the remaining spaces. And then in the last area, I'm using Hydrangea from Dharma. So on the mandala portion, I'm using mainly the blue purples. I'm also going to add a small line of vintage purple from Dye Spin right outside of the last hemostat. Okay, so the other part of the shirt is what I'm going to gravity dye. And I'm going to do the more red purples on that area. I'm going to use some royal purple from Grateful Dyes. And I'm going to add this dye in stripes on the shirt. By the way, I'm using both royal purple from Dye Spin and from Grateful Dyes on the same shirt. And they look totally different. They just happen to be next to each other on the color swatches. So if you refer back to that photo, you'll see what I'm talking about. The Dye Spin Royal Purple is definitely a more blue purple, where the Grateful Dyes Royal Purple is more of a reddish royal purple. They're both gorgeous colors, and I use them both a lot, but they do look very different. I also added Plum from Pro Chemical and Dye and Plum Blossom from Dharma. I'm now adding some Eggplant from Pro Chemical and Dye. Here again, Dharma has an eggplant and they have a plum and they don't necessarily look the same. I'm not really sure about the plum. I don't know that I've ever done a color swatch of Pro Chemicals Plum, but I just recently did one of the eggplant and it's not the same as Dharma's eggplant. So even if the color names are the same for different manufacturers, the dyes may not look exactly the same. I added a pretty generous portion of soda ash over the top because I'm going to add a lot of ice to this shirt. And I want to make sure when the ice melts and forces all of that liquid through the shirt that it doesn't wash out all of the soda ash that was originally in the shirt. The dye needs the soda ash and the higher pH to react and bond properly with the fabric. Then I'm going to add the ice on top of the shirt. It's finally cooled off here a little bit. It's only in the 90s today, so the ice isn't going to melt quite as fast as it was doing like a week or so ago. 
but I found that it works out a little bit better to use larger chunks of ice. So I pretty much pulled every container that I can find in the house to make ice with, and that's what I'm doing. I bought a two inch square silicone mold, which I think was intended to be used for whiskey ice cubes, and I've been making ice cubes with that, and those work out really great. The smaller round ones, there's some sort of a silicone baking thing that I had up in my cabinet that I never use. And then the big one I think was a Cool Whip container. I personally like to use these larger chunks of ice and have it melt a little bit slower. Using just regular ice, I was having to come back probably every 30 minutes and add ice to the shirt. I did come back and add a couple smaller chunks of ice in a few odd and end places, but for the most part, I did pretty well to get by with maybe one or two layers of ice. So I left the shirt until all of the dye got down to the very outer regions of the shirt. Then I took it and put it inside of a plastic container that had a metal rack down in the bottom, placed the shirt inside of that, and then put the lid on top of the container and went ahead and left it outside all night. That way, the shirt got the heat from being outside, but it didn't dry out. Remember, once the shirt dries out, the dye stops reacting. So I rinsed the shirt like normal, I took it to my utility sink, and I started rinsing in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. I also held the shirt up and rinsed off a few of the chunks of undissolved dye that were left sitting on top. After rinsing in cold for a while, I took the hemostats off of the shirt and warmed the water up to hot and continued rinsing in hot to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. When the water was running almost clear, I put the shirt along with some Dharma's Professional Textile Detergent into my washing machine and washed it using a hot water cycle. Okay, so the shirt's been washed and dried. This is what it looks like. Okay, so what do you guys think? I think this one turned out looking really cool. This is the first like mandala and gravity dye combination shirt that I've done and I'm pretty happy with it. I think it turned out looking really pretty. So my intention was to use the more blue purples in the very center in the mandala and the red purples on the rest of the shirt. And for the most part, that's kind of what happened. I also like the design that the hemostats made. It's just a little different than what I normally do with the hemostat mandala. And I really like that. I added the darker color right on the very outside of the last hemostat and it kind of makes the mandala pop off the shirt a little bit. It makes it look a little bit 3D. So I really like the mandala portion. I think it looks really pretty and I like the darker color right in the center. But what I think looks really cool in addition to the mandala is the back side of the shirt. It is so pretty how the dye just kind of swirls and it meets right in the very center of the back of the shirt. Almost like on the backbone portion of the shirt. It is just really a cool effect. If you're wondering, that really dark color is eggplant. That's a new one for me. I have eggplant from Dharma, but this is eggplant from Pro Chemical and Dye. I just got this color in about a week or so ago and made color swatches from it. So I've seen it used as a liquid, but this is the first time I've ever used the eggplant for ice dyeing. So when Michelle asked me to participate in this challenge for Alzheimer's, I wanted to do something that was different, something that I hadn't ever done before, and something that was special. And I think this shirt nailed it. I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. Like I mentioned earlier, Michelle has coordinated this whole entire project to have a different post of some sort of a purple item all month long. Most of the people that she has that are doing items are sewing them or hand making them. So there's a variety of really cool, unique items to come for the month of September. I'll leave links down below both to Michelle's site and to a memorial donation page that she has set up for her father who passed away from Alzheimer's. For those of you that are aware of the challenge, the one coming up tomorrow is Adam Sews. 
Okay, so even though I love the shirt, what do you guys think about it? Do you like the combination of both the gravity die and the hemostat mandala? Drop me some comments down below and let me know. And if you've enjoyed watching this video, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.